But now on the NVTV, a real icon is back where he belongs, bringing great entertainment well and truly back to your screens on a Friday night. Yes, indeed, it's glamour excitement and beautiful people all the way on Tonight with Jerry Kelly. Movie House Cinemas, proud sponsors of Tonight with Jerry Kelly. Treat yourself to a movie. Relax in VIP recliner seating without the VIP price tag. At Cityside, Glen Gormley, Makara, and Coleraine. Enjoy the show. Welcome your host, Jerry Kelly. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Hello. Welcome to Tonight with Jerry Kelly, coming to you from the E3 studios here at the Belfast Metropolitan College. Well, all across Belfast tonight, and indeed all across Northern Ireland this week, people have been dreaming up all sorts of wonderful fundraising events, because this, of course, is Children in Need Night. A night when we all pull together to help children in all sorts of circumstances less fortunate than ourselves. To tell us more, would you please welcome the head of children in need here in Northern Ireland, Fanula Watch, and of course, the most famous bear in the country, Pudsey. <laughs> Watch the step, Pudsey, watch the step. Fanula, great to see you. you Pudsey, too. lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. Sit down, if you can. <laughs> wow, it is it's such a great... This must be a great year for you, because COVID's over. This must be much been much more easy to organise this year than it has been before. Big thumbs up from Pudsey. Yes. It is so much better. The last couple of years have been really hard for everybody because... You know, all of the bake sales, all of the pyjama parties, all of the getting together just couldn't happen. Whereas this year, uh, it's been brilliant. Absolutely great. The problem, though, as I see it this year, we are living in very bad circumstances. Like, this has been the worst year financially for a lot of people economically. Is it going to be tough asking people to put money in a, into a collection box when, when, you know, their heating bills are coming in, their electricity bills are coming in? Are you worried about that this year? Yeah, I, I think we're really aware of that and as we say every year it's you know we are always amazed at people's kindness and generosity and you know every year we have young people who have said I've raised five pound or ten pound or everything is we're so welcome and it is so needed right now uh, we have 160 grants or you know projects in Northern, uh, in Ireland, Northern alone. Ireland alone wow. 8.6 million pound and as you say it's not been easy for young people we know that you know it's bad news at the moment with the cost of living crisis but it's so important that we reach young people that have so many challenges that are just now impacted by you know the current uh, crisis but whether it be two pound 200 pound Whatever it is, so welcome. But the money is going to go back to those young people yeah, as well. Once absolutely. again, how much did you raise last year overall? Do you remember? Oh yikes! So we had on the night we had the, around the thirty-eight million UK white, which is incredible oh, in a pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and by the end of the year, it was around the fifty million. So people get, keep giving year round. And, and we here, do you, do you have a target for here? We don't uh, have targets, and because people are online now, we haven't. We we have no indication really as to what but we do know that we get an awful lot of phone calls and we get an awful lot of fundraisers coming in and it's always been around the you know upwards to the million mark which is incredible it's fantastic yeah, it really so is. it's all happening at the moment down the bbc who's presenting tonight holly that's right so uh, the best bits uh, from northern ireland will be holly hamilton and uh, connor phillips Brilliant. of course and uh, on the sunday of course that's all happening tonight then on Sunday, they're at 11 o'clock, there's the best bits. So it's an hour show all about fundraising and uh, where the money goes in Northern Ireland. And what are the highlights we should be looking out for this year? Anything particularly you want to mention? Well, I just think there's some 
well, there's some brilliant fundraisers and we've got Hugo and Brooke Scullion is out talking to some just madcap fundraisers and that's always fun. But uh, there's a lot of projects being shown as well. So there's a young uh, man, Saul, who's uh, in the May Murray Foundation and they're an organisation that, you know, look at access for uh, people with dis young people with disabilities and they have really focused on things like the beach. Why can I not get onto the beach if I'm, you know, in a wheelchair? So yeah, it's yeah. all about the accessible, access, accessible ways in which to uh, get onto the sand, but also as well get out surfing. So the, I mean, he went up sailing as well. I, I just think he's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. How much do you love your job? I, you know, it's I love this time of year. I love the madcapness. I love. Pudsey being beside me, I love meeting all the fundraisers, but it's the year round, there's a team of us make, make grants in Northern Ireland and uh, over the last few weeks we've been able to be out and about meeting projects from every part of Northern Ireland and it's been great to talk to people again. Pudsey is looking great, he's what, 42 years old? 42. I tell you he's looking well for 42 isn't he? <laughs> he's wearing better than I am at the same age. Yes. <laughs> uh, it has just been a phenomenal 40, 42 years. That there, there's no doubt about it. Sadly, though, it's as much needed today as it was 42 years ago. One would have hoped the children in need would have disappeared. There would have been no need for a children in need after 10 or 15 years. But here we are, 42 years later, still with the same problems, if not worse. Yeah, I mean, of course, the ideal would be that this isn't required but I suppose what we always say is we're almost the space in between for young people so it's we provide money for those pillars around young people when they need help so it could be that we fund a lot of youth workers that just are there when young people need them counsellors uh, you know fun and friendship Children coming together to have fun on a, in a summer experience is so incredibly important. And we know that the big thing coming through is e mental health yes, for young course, people. Course. And uh, the ask increasingly is, uh, you know, youth workers and counsellors and organisations supporting young people through this really tricky time, but trying to get young people at the early stages as well. So before it gets to that crisis end where you need, you know, one-to-one -one counselling to say, actually... Let's talk about this. What is it? Let's talk about what's in your head. Let's manage anxiety, see what we can do. So that's the space where we want to yeah, be. Yeah, uh, yeah. But and it's a really important space as well. So, Absolutely. yeah, that's the biggie. Well, look, and I wish you and everyone on the BBC and everyone all around Northern Ireland who's yeah. out fundraising all this week. Pudsey, thank you so much for coming in. It's a pleasure seeing you after all these years. I think I thank you and me to you as, as well. <laughs> and you to all the audience as well, Pudsey. <laughs> well, look, uh, after this programme, get on to BBC, would you please, and support the BBC tonight and give as much money as you can. It's such, such an important cause. Vanilla, thank you so much indeed. Thank and Pudsey, thank you so much indeed. Big round of applause for both of them, please. Uh, I do... I do want to finish uh, this children in need part of the program because we have something very special. Earlier this year, 12-year-old Tom Johnson from Coleraine won the BBC Primary School Soloist of the Year competition and on the back of that he was asked to take part in Children in Need tonight. Now in case we've already missed his performance tonight, as Fanula says, we'll be able to see it on Sunday. It is being repeated on Sunday. But he's here for us. The song he sang for the Soloist of the Year competition was a song from the Billy Elliot, the musical. It's called Electricity. That's what he's going to sing for us tonight. It needs a little explanation. Billy, in the, in the film and in the, in the stage play, he's auditioning for a place with the Royal Ballet Company. And before he does the audition, one of the adjudicators asks him a question. Just ask you, Billy, what does it feel like when you're dancing? I can't really explain it, I haven't got the words. 
It's a feeling that you can't control I suppose it's like forgetting Losing who you are But at the same time Something makes you whole It's like that there's music Playing in your ear And I'm listening And I'm listening And then I disappear And then I feel a change Like a fire deep inside Something's bursting me wide open Impossible to hide And suddenly I'm flying Flying like a bird Like electricity Electricity Sparks inside of me And I'm free It's a bit like being angry It's a bit like being scared Confused and all mixed up And mad as hell It's like when you've been crying And you're empty and you're full But I don't know what it is It's hard to tell It's like that there's music Playing in your ear but the music is impossible impossible to hear but then i feel it move me like a burning deep inside something's bursting me wide open impossible to hide and suddenly i'm flying flying like a bird like electricity Electricity sparks inside of me And I'm free, I'm free Electricity sparks inside of me Tom Johnson, that was superb. Congratulations, well done. Now, when you won that, you were you're in primary school when you won the soloist of the year. Yeah. You're a big boy now. Uh huh. Yeah. What school are you at now? Corian Grammar. Ooh, first year. Yeah. What do you like about it? Yes, yeah, good. Yeah. Good. What's yeah. your favourite subject? Rugby. <laughs> <laughs> Just not a subject. What do you want to do when you grow up? Do you think will you continue with the singing, with acting? What will you do? I'm not sure yet. Yeah. You're not sure yet. Yeah. Well, no. whatever you do, Tom, you have a great talent. You sang that beautifully. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure knowing you. Tom Johnson, ladies and gentlemen, what a star. What a star. <laughs> love that, love that. Now, back in 1989, a young Belfast comedian was asked to play the part of the Dame in the Grand Opera House's annual pantomime. Nervously, he took the role on, and such was his success that for the past 33 years, I think it is, he's been asked back and back and back, and he's now become the longest-serving pantomime Dame in the same theatre in the UK and Ireland. He, or should I say she, is back again with Cinderella this year, which opens in the Opera House on December the 3rd. But what of the man behind the May McFetridge character? Let's find out and welcome John Lenehan. Hey. Hello, hey. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Uh -huh. you. Hey, do you not wish you could sing like that at age 12? I never heard it. I was in the toilet. <laughs> No, I didn't know he was excellent. Wasn't he superb? Right. Wasn't he superb? Congratulations, son. We were talking there about uh, Pudsey, Children in Need. 42 years old it's mm. been going. How many of those 42 shows do you think you were in? Well, I started in 87, so... From, from 87. You've practically been in every one yeah, of the Children yeah. in Need ones, too. Absolutely. Well, near enough, except for the past couple of years... 
I have them there. Yeah, why not? They didn't want you. No. <laughs> Aye, but who cares? You were, it was for none. <laughs> and, no, it was. Uh, we were always busy with panto and stuff like that. Of course, you know? of course, of course. I want to take you back to. Uh, I think it was 1993. And this was children in need. If you can see over that monitor, have a, have a little oh look at God. this, John. Where do you see? Sisters, sisters, there were never such devoted sisters. Never had to have a chaperone, no sir. I'm there to keep my eye on her. Caring, sharing, every little thing that we are wearing. When a certain gentleman arrived from Rome. But in tight places we think and we act as one yeah. Those who have seen us Say that not a thing could come between us Many men have tried to split us up But no one can Nobody can God bless the mister Who comes between me and my sister Remember all that? Do you remember? I just remember it. I, I remember do, that. Oh, I remember it very well. And the great and Jerry Anderson, the great Jerry Anderson, Anderson, Anderson there as well. Um, that was that was the fun we had. It was. It was a great crack. And then I think we went to the green room after that. <laughs> I think we were in the green room before. <laughs> it was about, <laughs> it was about five stone ago. <laughs> <laughs> then was that ninety three? Ninety three, I think it was. Tell me about Cinderella this year. Yes, Cinderella. We have. Uh, Paddy Jenkins and myself, and uh, I'm the fairy godmother. And it's great the way, you know, they have me coming in on a star, 25 feet above the stage. At your age, John, at your at age. At my age. Mm -hmm. And I... It, <laughs> it just slapping the mouth and So, but I, I'm sitting on this beam, it's about... It's like, you know the beams that they have in the Olympics? You see the kids jumping on it? Yeah. It's about that size. It nearly disappeared. Anyway, you're sitting in that... But the belt you in, but it's a wee bit of Velcro, you know. All I need to go top low. I've been dead before I hit the stage. Can I talk to you seriously for a moment? None of us are getting any younger, we know that. No. The pantomime, the dame, it's a very demanding role. Mm -hmm. Physically, it's very demanding. Yeah. Now, you've had your health problems recently. Mm -hmm. Are you up for this? Well, I've got both of my knees replaced. Well, you couldn't be from North Belfast and not get your knees done. <laughs> so... And when it was on, when I got when I got this knee done most recently was July a year ago. I was on the, the crutches, the double yes. dutches, and when I was I put my back out, and my back has been right from it. And any time I go to you know go to Portugal or you're on a plane, you're going to airports, you know these go go and there's, there's, there's wee bits of metal here, there, and you know my wrists and stuff like that. It's, it's like a Christmas. You see the you know, the security, the elders. You know, you in there. You know, I, I you're, you're you. making fun of all this. You had a slight stroke as well. Yeah, the TIA. Were you frightened, John? Yeah, it was. Um, I was watching the chase, and um, I went to stand up, and I couldn't. And I tried to move my foot, and it wouldn't work. And I just, I nearly, I nearly died. You know, literally, I like, was frightened, trying to move the other foot. And I sat there and I, I said to my, my grandson, Johnny, who was doing the stakes behind me, and I said, Thomas, are the stakes... This lasted about 35 seconds. And I, a friend of mine who's he, he's in Kingsbridge, Mark Regan, I says, Mark, this, it, just, it went away as quick as it came. I said, Mark, I'll tell you what has happened. He said, John, you've taken the TIA. He says, it's a mini stroke. Is there anybody there? I said, the whole family's here, in-laws and outlaws, you know, the, the daughters, husbands and blah, blah. He said, tell Donna to get into the car, put you in the car, 
and drive to the Royal Victoria Hospital and stop for nothing. Mm -hmm. And I was in the hospital by 25 past six, and then three, four girls came along, two nurses and two girls with the backpacks, and says, we're the stroke squad. And they had me upstairs, and I was back at home at 10 past nine, eating mistake. Yeah. And they had done MRI, they had done blood tests, they gave me everything that had to be given, tablets, medication, heart monitor, everything. So anybody talks about the, the hospitals here, they're just unbelievably superb. How long ago was that now? Not sure, I think it was February two years ago. Two years ago. Fifth Everything's of February. Everything's been good. Everything's been good. Everything's since been grand, thank so God. You're wearing a brace as well. Yeah, well, I, brace well I took a brace off because right. I just wanted the people to see my fat belly, you yeah. know. <laughs> But I have a brace on because my back's bad. I have scoliosis at the bottom of my spine. It's not that way, it's that way. Here's it that way. Well, it's that way. <laughs> and should, it's, it's, should you be here at all? I don't know. I was caught in bombs and everything and shot at and everything. God doesn't want me. The devil's afraid of me. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do I do to get all this? I'm still alive. Are you worried though about the panther? Because I say it's a very physical, demanding role. Well, I'm worried about the twenty-five well, foot drop that. coming yeah. in. That, yeah. but you're. But I think you take me out on it as well. <laughs> but you're going to be rushing off and on new outfits. Oh, well, that's not too bad because if I'm if I'm doing stand up, say you're standing up for forty minutes, my back is just just throbbing. It's throbbing. But with panther, you're on and you're on for seven minutes or something, then you're off the next act on and. That's it. It's on and off, on and off. You know, for the, for the, foreseeable length of the show. You, you, you've a great attitude, all John. Nothing gets you down. Nothing seems to get you down. You're very positive about it. Well, gee, you know, you, you only get one life, Jerry, and the, the way you're messing about with yours, you wouldn't think it. <laughs> but uh, no, no, I just, I just love life. I love my family, and you know, I love all my kids and grandkids, and it's, you know, and you have to go to your work. You hate to go to your work. I know. That's what they say in Lurgan. You hate to go to your work. <laughs> Do you see a day when you will not go to your work? Oh, I'm sure it'll happen, and it'll, because of medical reasons, if it's, you know, if I'm still able to do it, I will do it if they want me and if the, the punters want you, you know. But the day it stops, you know, it'll be it'll be different, but it'll be still a good show. It'll just be different without me, you know. It'll be it'll be great. There'll be no show without punch. <laughs> there'll be no show without punch. Oh, there'll no. be no. There'll be no. no pantomime without me. But we still do stand-up stuff and, you know... I know, but that's not funny. It's not your TV, is it? I'm going to take a break now, all right? All right. John, good luck with the panto this year. Jay, thank you very much. And maybe we'll see you before the year's out. Please, God. John Lennon, ladies and gentlemen, the great John Lennon. Thank you. Thank you. Hawaii. <laughs> Hawaii. <laughs> okay, plenty more to come. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. See you then. Hawaii. Thanks so much. Hello, my name is Ellie Michalova, and I'm doing my second year in the creative media production and factual television. In today's show, I'm working as a camera operator, and I hope to work in the TV and film industry in the near future. Here we are on the north coast, where sporting legends are made. He needs this putt to advance to the next stage, but can he do it? The crowd are holding their breath. Can he cope with the pressure? Dad, would you take the shot? Yes! yes. Well.
Movie House Cinemas are taking you back in time for fantastic family film favourites in November and tickets are just £3. We're kicking off with the original Beauty and the Beast this week at Movie House Cityside, then Gormley, Makara and Coleraine. Book now at moviehouse.co.uk for family favourites at just £3 per ticket. Direct from Sweden, Arrival, one of the world's great ABBA shows, performing the music of ABBA at the SSE Arena Belfast, featuring original ABBA musicians and the Ulster Orchestra. The SSE Arena Belfast, Saturday the 7th of January. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.ie. How would you like to win an overnight stay with a £100 food and drink voucher for the Lansdowne Hotel or Benedict's of Belfast? Simply text the word Jerry to double eight double four zero. That's Jerry to eight eight four four zero. It's that easy. Texts are charged at your standard network rate. Entries close at midnight on the twenty fourth of November. Thank you very much. Now. The word legend is generally overused these days, but in the case of my next guest, I can think of no more appropriate description. He was a key figure in Belfast's punk rock scene of the 70s and 80s. He founded the Good Vibration Store, a record label representing bands such as Rudy, The Undertones and The Outcasts. A man whose life was made into a feature film, a man who changed the shape of Belfast's music scene. Will you please welcome Northern Ireland music legend, the godfather of punk, the brilliant Terry Hooley. Hi Terry. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. Do you recognise yourself in that description? No, I didn't. Down? I wondered who you were talking about. <laughs> I'm actually. sure you did not. That's I mean, not how I would describe myself. I'm sure it's not, but that's how other people look at you, Plus Terry Plus the Hooley. fact that I am an old hippie. <laughs> and because you didn't listen to us in the 60s, Punk was my hippie's revenge. Was it world. indeed? Is yeah. that the way it was? And the other thing was, when I grew up in Belfast, there was 80 clubs and dance halls like in Belfast, in, in and around Belfast, from little church halls to the wonderful uh, ballrooms that we had, uh, the plaza with the revolving stage yes. and all. And then the troubles, everything died. And all the bands that I used to go and see, like the last time I saw you was at the Rolling Stones in Dublin. That's correct. Yeah, I met the Rolling Stones on their first visit here and they were really nice to me. I was a huge Stones fan, but fell out with Bob Dylan on his first visit. Uh, all those bands. You like, fell out with Bob Dylan on Yeah. Terry Hilly fell out with Bob I Dylan. I actually on protested first. at his gig. <laughs> really? Look, let, let me talk about the punk scene because I was not into the punk scene. No, nobody was. For, well, somebody was. <laughs> For people, for the young people here at this college, like the seventies is ancient history. Yes. For the rest of us, it's like the other day. What was Belfast like musically and socially in the seventies? Can you paint a picture for us what it was like it was here? Dreadful. Everything had died. Um, the bar, the bars that we used to go to were bombed. Uh, some nights you said goodbye to friends and never saw them again. I mean, it really was horrific. Um, you're like you were afraid to walk down the streets, a car bomb could go off. And then there was a ring of steel round the, the city centre. Yes. And then we opened the Heart Bar, Punk and the Heart Bar, and the only, the only people you saw at night were the, the police and the army and the punks. Where did the punks come from? Were the punks, were, were they rebelling? Was it a rebellious cult that was going about? Or how did they actually it's form? Just, uh, well, uh, well, obviously, there were bands like the Sex Pistols and the Clash and all in England. And the Clash came to play Belfast and they weren't allowed to play at the Ulster Hall. They said it was an insurance problem, so all the kids got, got outside. People didn't realise there were so many punks who were all outside and they started pogoing in the street. And then the, the police moved in and started beating them up because <laughs> that's what they did when, when I... When I a group of young people got yeah, together, yeah. and, that, and that, so it was known as the Battle of Bedford Street. And that, that's when a lot of people got to know people from the other side of town. And that was one thing that punk did. It, it didn't, 
It didn't matter whether you were Catholic or Protestant. So there was no Catholic punk scene and Protestant punk scene? No, not really. Uh, it didn't matter if you came from Mars. It didn't matter if your hair was orange or green. As long as you were a punk, that was it. But you weren't a punk. No, I wasn't. So how did you, how did you attract them all? How did, like Good Vibrations, the so record what, shop. What happened with me was I went to... Uh, I opened the shop. I, I actually I used to work for Kodak. and uh, I came out one night and three guys uh, jumped out of cars and tried to grab me in a car. And two guys, this down to the docks, and two guys that I knew jumped in and saved me. And I got away. And then I decided, well, if they're going to kill me, I'm going to do something that I really love. And I had been a fanatical record collector and really into music. And as a kid, all we had was a big, big radio. And I used to love it. And my mum and dad used to go out to Labour Party meetings and I'd be listening to Radio Luxembourg and all. Right. And the best thing that my father ever bought me was a transistor radio. I couldn't believe it, you know, you walk around with uh, your piece in and listen to music. Yeah, but in the shop, you weren't but selling I, I the 70s songs. I, I, was, I was selling, uh, well, a lot of 60s bands, uh, 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 alternative country. I was selling I was selling jazz, blues. I had been a secondary of the Blues Society, a good blues section, all sorts of things. And then uh, these kids came in and started asking me for stuff. And then I was told about this band, uh, called Rudy, and yeah. uh, I went down to see them with some, with some old hippie friends, <laughs> and the outcasts were on first, and I hated them a <laughs> passion, really, <laughs> and uh, ended up being their manager and yeah. their record label. <laughs> and you had Rudy. And we're still the best of friends. I don't know how that happened. I've never been out, and they're still travelling the world. Japan. And look, look at the undertones. And the undertones. Uh, so, so, right, so, so how did you then take them from so, here? Well, what happened was I heard, Rudy, I heard Rudy and I really liked them. And, I th and they reminded me of 60s bands. And then I, I thought about growing up in Belfast. We ha didn't have really records or anything of the, some of the great bands that there were. And, uh, and then I s said to Rudy, how about would you like to make a record? And my idea was to make a flip-flop record that uh, we could give away with punk fanzines right. and stuff because there was a punk fanzine being printed in the printers above the shop. And uh, the police came in and all the kids started going, SSR, you see? <laughs> because of because of the beat them up outside the bed. On the bed public street, it, wasn't yes. a, it wasn't like a Republican thing or a lawyer's yes, thing. It was yes, just... Yes. And, uh, and they... And in the film, it shows you that, but it doesn't show you they brought the UDR in and they broke up the gig. And the kids had no fear. And I just went, this is absolutely brilliant. This is anarchy. This is what I've been waiting for all my life. And I, I embraced it. And I just loved it all. And look at the, the undertones. How did you meet them? Where were they playing? Well, that's another story. A friend of mine, I had friends who were at, at the art college because I'd been doing wee underground magazines and these people would help me with graphics and stuff. And uh, I was given a demo tape by a friend called Bernie. And he he came to me one day. I was on my way up to Lavery's Bar to sign up, meet another band and, and sign them up. And he said to me, uh, what about the undertones? I says, I'm not sure. We don't have enough money. To... Well, everything was done on a shoestring budget. And uh, he says, the band are about to break up. I says, well, I'll tell you when they get across the road. So I got across the road and I says, tell them on the label. And I went up to meet this other band. I felt really bad about it. And they had a manager and all. And the manager says, well, that's okay, because we're off to London anyway. Your label's not big enough. And I went, fair enough. So they went off to London, were never heard of again. And now the undertones are still playing still all over the world. Tell me this, did you make any money out of it? No, I'm not a businessman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man of no property. All of that and you never made? Oh, no. Uh, uh, well, we never made money. We, we, people wanted our records, but nobody wanted to pay us and stuff. <laughs> we just... Uh, it wasn't about money. I've never, I grew up in poverty. I'm going to die in poverty. I mean, well, I'll tell you what. You've had I mean, I've never really been interested in money. No, I know you have I mean, I've been offered jobs by record companies, yeah. like Warner Brothers, to go and work in the States and, and to go and work in London and all. But, you know, it's just... Never it's, bought. Not, I mean, I left school education subnormal. The teachers told me that I would not get a job sweeping the streets. Really? And really? then when my book came out, 
the school asked me to go back and talk to the kids. And I said, no, I never, I never, it was the worst time in my life. I hated it. <laughs> I said, there were a bunch of Nazi thugs, teachers. <laughs> so, uh, well, and from, then, in the film came out. I was going to say, from Adam, In the, the film came out and I said, would, would, would I come back? And then the musical came out. And I said, please, please, see when it's dancing, good vibrations, dancing on ice, do not phone me up. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you what, it could well happen. Terry, look... Well, we the one th a good thing about having no money and all is you know who your friends are, because I have had friends who have inherited money. Worst thing ever happened to them. And they're really miserable, and I don't know who to trust. Well, you can trust me, Terry, because I haven't got tuppence to run together, are I? No. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Terry Hooley. Terry, thank you right. so much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. This is a man. This is a man you could talk to all night long. He's got story after story. And if you haven't seen the film Good Vibrations, I don't know whether you can still see it or not, but go along and see it, yeah. It was uh, sold out in Bangor all week, and I stood outside like Father, Father Ted with down with this sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it was dressed as Dougal. Protesting at your own movie. Aye. Now, that's Terry Hooley, all right. <laughs> Terry, thank you so much indeed. <laughs> OK, we're going to have to move on because... Um, I don't know now what's, what's going on with comedians these days, but last week we had a fella called Terry McHugh on the programme, who, as I discovered during the interview, had at one stage been an international yo-yo champion. Now, tonight, my next guest, who's also a comedian, he was once a martial arts exponent, winning several All-Ireland Championships in karate before representing Ireland in the European and in the World Championships. Unfortunately, a serious shoulder injury forced him out of the sport. As I say, he's now a comedian. He's from Uri. He's living in London at the moment, but he's been the support act for Paddy Keelty, spending a huge chunk of this year touring with him in Ireland and the UK. Would you give a big welcome, please, to John Maher? John, how are you? Great, thank you. You got it. You got a yell. You got a yell. That's it. My family must be in. There are quite a few of them there. Last week, you see, when I was telling you about the yo-yo guy. Yeah, Terry. And he, he, you know Terry? I do, yeah. Did you see him doing the yo-yos? I did. And he brought the yo-yos and he demonstrated the yo-yos. Now, I presume you're going to demonstrate a few karate moves uh, for us. Guys, we just need a volunteer from the audience and I'm going to boot you in the head <laughs> from 16 yards. No, not at all. Thankfully, that's in a, in a, in a very, uh, in a past but life. But it is true, though. It is. It you is were, true, yeah. You were? Yeah, yeah. It is from, I was about 10 until I was 24. So I did, started with boxing and judo and then moved to karate and that's when I competed internationally and fought all over the world and got beat up in every continent you well, can think of. This, now you're from, where are you from originally? I was actually born in Clue Bay in, in County Mayo. In Mayo, then you came to Newry. Yeah, because why wouldn't you move to the border in 1989? Good question. Of course. Why would where you? else why would, would you go? You? Yeah. Uh, so was all the karate done from there? Yeah, from Newry, yeah. And uh, yeah, but it was, you know, it was an all Ireland thing yeah. before that was cool. And uh, yeah, and just did that for years. And that's when I competed and then got the injury, which and knocked me back. You. Yeah. So what age were you, what, 18, 19? Yeah, I was about 19 when I got the injury. So, so, so what did you do then? What did you say, right, I'm going to be a comedian? No. Well, if I'm honest, I wanted to be a comedian from I was a, from a toddler like that was always a dream but it never seemed real like how do you do it do you know what i mean there's it, there's nothing i didn't yeah, know anyone yeah, yeah, who could yeah, be yeah. it um and so this was kind of always in the back of my head then once i got injured um i was out for a while and just kind of floating and i went to visit a friend of mine in london and he lived with a guy who had done comedy and i was like hang on so that is that makes it possible then so that person who uh now runs a production company over there signed me up to an open mic gig oh. and I did my first open mic while I was visiting London and I walked off stage and went this is the rest of my life now and that's it just yeah. everything has just been poured into that yeah and since then like you've won numerous awards you've been one yeah, young I mean, comedian of the year yeah yeah I've been nominated for a lot more than I've won I understood so <laughs> I would there was a while there where I was definitely the biggest loser in all of comedy the biggest nominator I was the <laughs> biggest no, I was nominated for everything <laughs> anything that you could nominate me for I was up there uh, but then in August just gone we won a big Edinburgh award at the Fringe Festival yes. and that then has kind of rocketed And is things. it Northern Irish humour you bring with you? 
I don't know. I don't, I mean, I don't talk about the troubles lots or anything, but I suppose we have a sense of humour that is quite different from British yeah. humour. Yeah. Uh, so I just kind of tell stories. Like my guys, like Billy Connolly and Tommy Tiernan. Yeah, and yeah. So th those, are the, those are the people that I would love to emulate. Uh, so, you know, I couldn't tell you a joke now, but if you give me 25 minutes, then I'll tell you a whole rake of stories. Well, you see, I could, I'd love to listen to you and I'd love to talk about all your successes. But we don't want to do that. I want to talk about the worst gig you've ever done. Here we go. And that was this year. Oh, by a country mile. Tell the mile. good people how excruciatingly bad you were that night. Uh, first of all, Jerry, I don't think you were there. So uh, <laughs> let's all let's all pump the brakes a little second here. Uh, no, so this was so it was the first gig that I was supporting Patrick doing borderline. He's doing do, borderline. he's doing borderlines, and like I couldn't get a call from him. He's a legend. He he's seen a clip of mine online, rang me up. Do you want to support me on the tour? I was I couldn't believe it. You know, knocked over. Here we go. I'm looking forward to it. First nights in Enniskill, and I had never met Patrick. But I'm like, here we go. This is so good. Get down to Skill and Ardo and Theatre sold out. What could be better? Nothing. You know, they're waiting. It's his first gig. They're waiting. Ah, oh, you can feel it in the air, you know. And uh, I'm like, here we go. And I'm in the back. I'm buzzing. I'm ironing my shirt and all, thinking, oh, here we go. We're about to start. The year's sorted. And I went out on stage. And for 20 minutes, silence. Except I got three laughs from one person so like at various points somebody went ha <laughs> and then another five six minutes later I'm sweating buckets ha <laughs> and then I walked off to nothing and was like I'm sacked before I begin even like it's over I'm thinking it was that bad do you know father Brian Darcy yes. he was backstage Praying and for he you. goes, that didn't go well. I was thinking, <laughs> where were you? Like, where were you when I needed you? Like, and uh, so, what went wrong? Why was I? Why did it go so bad? I just think I was so excited that I didn't take the time to set the tone or to get the energy of the room or to even introduce myself. Like nobody knew who I was, right? So. As far as, I just walked on stage and they're thinking, there's some guy to sweep the floor before Patrick comes out. Like, <laughs> and, and I probably would have got a better applause if I had done that. Well, how, Actually, long, how long did it take you to recover from that? Because that could have ruined a young comedian. Ah, look, you know, I've had bad gigs before and nobody was kicking me in the head after. So, right. you know, everything is better than that. And, but the next night we were out again. I think we were Oma the next night. It was great. Nobody, everybody laughed. Second time round. I'm sure some people were like, get this guy off the stage. They had probably heard the rumours from Anna Skillen. But, ha. um, ha. no, it was good then. Ha, ha. Yeah, yeah, like, this, 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 that guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. The big forehead guy, I know that guy. Um, so, yeah, and then, and then from then on, we were flying then. I believe you're still living in London, yeah? Yeah, although we're about to move. Oh. But, yeah, moving at the end of the month. You're getting married, I believe. Getting married, although this is a, a lot of abouts. Uh, we're getting married in Bahrain because my partner is from the Middle East. She's a Muslim. So we're doing the Muslim wedding there. Except Bahrain have just announced a week of public holidays in December. So the wedding's cancelled now. Right. I mean, to be fair, we get a great holiday out of it and no longer the pressure. But, uh, yeah, it's been an interesting week. And she's, she's a writer and a comedian as well. She's, she's not a comedian, she's a writer, yeah. She's, writer. she's writing a couple of movies and stuff at the minute. You've landed on your feet, boy. You want to see her? <laughs> <laughs> you got a picture there, have you? I do, yeah, I'll see you. I'll I'll see you yeah. uh, good luck with everything. Thanks a million for Thank coming. Thank you very Lovely much. Lovely meeting yeah. you. Ladies and gentlemen, you, he, he really is good. John Maher, John Maher, yeah. John Maher. <laughs> Thank you, John. Okay, we're going to take uh, another break. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Bye. Hi, my name's Lily. Uh, I study HND motion graphics at Belfast Met. I'm in my second year, and I helped work on the title sequence for the Jerry Kelly Show. And uh, hopefully by the end of this, I'll land myself a job somewhere doing 3D animation. Let the good times roll at Super Strikes at the Jet Center. You can now book your lane online. We've got 14 bowling lanes and four mini bowling lanes. 
Plus, we serve delicious hot food and snacks. Discover bowling today at the Jet Center. Jet Center, entertainment for everyone. Movie House Cinemas are taking you back in time for fantastic family film favourites in November and tickets are just £3. We're kicking off with the original Beauty and the Beast this week at Movie House Cityside, then Gormley, Makara and Coleraine. Book now at moviehouse.co.uk for family favourites at just £3 per ticket. How would you like to win an overnight stay with a £100 food and drink voucher for the Lansdowne Hotel or Benedict's of Belfast? Simply text the word Jerry to 88440. That's Jerry to 88440. It's that easy. Texts are charged at your standard network rate. Entries close at midnight on the 24th of November. Welcome back. Now, earlier this year, country singer Cleona Hagen broke quite a few of her male admirer fans' hearts when she finally tied the knot with her longtime love and fellow musician Simon Sheeran. It was a lavish celebrity affair in Roscommon last May, all captured on camera for a TV documentary shown earlier this month called From This Moment On. Here's a little clip, and here they are discussing who knows who better. <laughs> Come here, Cleona, will we do the best Mr. and Mrs. Quiz questions? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> See how well you actually know each other. Um, what's Simon's favourite movie? Um, uh, pass. Pass! <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's try again. Yeah. Um, what's his number one fear? Spiders. Spiders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I even know that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who said I love you first? Oh, definitely him. <laughs> uh, who is the tidiest? <clears throat> Me. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? I actually don't sound so shocked, Joan. We played a Mr. and Mrs. Quiz with Joan and Olivia. And right. one of the questions was, who's cleaner? And they actually said you. I was yeah. shocked. I said I'm Monica out of Friends, clean freak. Uh, have you a pet name for him? Boo Boo. Boo Boo. Has he a pet name for you? Boo Boo. <laughs> I'm delighted to say, that the newlyweds are with us today. So would you please welcome Boo Boo and Boo Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> Simon, all around this way. Good to see you. Uh, well done. Boo Boo and Boo Boo. <laughs> That's a new two piece. That's a yeah. new two piece. That's a good ring to it. You see, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to call people nowadays. Are you, let me have written this down. No, no, besides Boo Boo and Boo Boo. Are you Mr. and Mrs. Simon Sheeran? Are you Mrs. Cleona Sheeran and Mr. Simon Sheeran? Or Cleona Hagen and Simon Sheeran? Do you know what? If my mother was sitting here right now, yes. it'd be Cleona Hagen and Simon Hagen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah. when you write to, you know, Christmas card, Happy Christmas to Mr. and Mrs. Hagen Sheeran. <laughs> Hagen Sheeran. <laughs> you know, nobody actually asks us that no, yet. Nobody has. Well, we haven't thought about it since. It's going to happen. I think, uh, well, we, well, I'll always keep Cleona Hagen. For, for stage. Of course, yeah. Yes, of course but you will. I might have mind. to just go with Sharon. 
Unless you want to change to here again, I know, I think we'll stick with the Sheeran. <laughs> now, your Sheeran, yes. you're nothing with the other Sheeran. Ed? Yes. Oh, that's a brother, yeah. He's Hello. not that particular one. <laughs> he's E-N, you're... He's He's A N actually. A N. A N. You're I N. I N. Yeah. So you have no money at all. Then. No, no. no. You're not the one. <laughs> Tried everything. With how long? Do you, the wrong one. How long? Do you, how long do you two know each other now? Oh, I'd say about six, seven years. Say about six, seven years. Um, I remember meeting Simon and his family for the first time because they're also musical, and I met them. They were doing. Uh, they were the backing band for a gig I was doing, and met them for the first time. And I was like, that one over there with with the ears pierced. I was like, he's very, very. Very shy, or is he a wee bit stuck up, or what? He yes. didn't talk to me. Yes, yes. I was like, he was very shy. Yes. <laughs> he was very shy. And then fast forward, was it about three years? Well, I asked Joe like ten times. Okay. Yeah. I, got, I got no every time. I was like, no, it's just no. I'm not. I don't want to date anyone now. So I was like, okay. I wasn't I'll ready. Try again next month. <laughs> so that was gone for probably two years. So you're both from big families, are you? Um, How many is in your family? Oh, I have a, I'm the youngest of eleven. Really? Five older brothers and five older sisters, yeah. And all musical? All musical, yeah. Musical family. The whole lot of us. And did you all play in your band? Yes, yeah, all play in, in my band, yeah. All his brothers? All his brothers. And you picked him? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking of. I was the only single one left. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Yes, yes. <laughs> he was my favourite. Uh, what was the wedding like? Was it everything that you'd hoped it to be? Oh, it was just, it was honestly the most magical day ever. Um, Simon and I were very laid back people. Uh, and the whole, we wanted that flow for the wedding. It was so relaxed. We didn't want it to be regimented. And I think we were actually having our first dance at like half 11, 12 o'clock that night. Which was, can you remember? My dad sang it for us. Lovely. Yeah, he's obviously a musician as well his whole life, so. We thought, we thought we'd, it'd be something different that he'd sing our first dance. So he was delighted, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. He, it he was, loved it was it, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. The day just went too quickly. That was the only thing. Was it, it was a very, fun. was it a very flash day? Was it? it was, it was, was, it was it? a great day. How uh, many guests? We had over 200. Yeah, yeah, yeah 220, two, I think. Two, yeah, yeah, any right. celebrities? There was oh, Una Healy, huh? Marty Morrissey. Uh -huh. uh, Linda else? Martin. Linda Martin, oh. yeah. Yeah, lots. It was, yeah. It was, it was a big, <laughs> big, missing people now. It was a big day, a big day. It was great. But you really enjoyed it. Oh, brilliant. And what about making the film? Now, some newlyweds would run a mile from that. It took a lot of convincing yeah. to the first time. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, really. But yeah, I know, I worked out. It was brilliant. We're delighted to have it now. It was so much fun. And looking back at it, it's, it's just it's great. It was a great experience as well, you know. Right, so you're going to continue great. with the singing. That's, that's definite. Yes. 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 And you're going to do your... Dolly Parton song. A bit of Dolly Parton, yeah. Well, look, well, I want to talk to you more, but I want you to do a bit of Dolly Parton yeah. for it. Would you make your way across? Indeed. Because I want you to sing one song for us as you're making your way across. Absolutely. I can tell you this is going to be a, because Cleona is going to be doing the Dolly Parton yeah. songbook a little bit later on. We'll talk about that. But the one that they've chosen tonight, it's one of my favourites. This is Jolene. Choice of men, but 
that I could never love again. He is the only one for me, Jolene. I had to have this talk with you. My happiness depends on you and whatever you decide to do, Jolene. Y'all ready to sing? Here we go. Jolene, 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 Jolene. Oh, I'm begging of you, please don't take my man. Hey. <laughs> Jolene, 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 Jolene. Please don't take him just because you can. Jolene, Jolene. Jolene, Jolene. Thank you. <laughs> come on, Buck. Come on, Buck. And well done, audience. We're good singing, yeah, good wow. singing, good singing, good singing. <laughs> you must have viewed hours and hours of Dolly Parton, have you? Um, from a young age, I honestly have adored Dolly Parton. Why? What, what was the attraction? Um, well, obviously her talent. She's an amazing singer, unbelievable songwriter. But I just think the overall person, she has achieved so much in life, but she hasn't forgotten her roots or who she is. She seems so humble. She seems so kind. And for somebody of her magnitude to still have herself and remember where she's come from, I just think, wow, yeah. that that's... That, that's what you call a legend. You, you've got you've got yeah. twang in the voice as well. You, oh, you've, yeah, you you've got her. You, do you try and, and exactly mimic the voice? Do you know what? I still want to have Cleona in there as well. Yes, you know, of course. The Dolly Songbook, it's all about celebration of Dolly songs. You know, I, 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 but I still don't want to lose myself either. You know, I'm, I'm so delighted that I actually get to sing these iconic songs like Jolene and Nine to Fives and, you know, but still have, you, have everyone saying to me, you know, obviously you can hear similarities, but you can still hear. You've got your own wee stamp yes, on it too. That is true. You do. You, know, you hear we, both. You can hear both. Yeah, yeah. But so, what does the the, the Dolly song book? What's it going to sound like? How many many Dolly songs are you oh, going to be doing? So, I'd say there's probably over twenty songs. So, we've done the Dolly really? song book. Really, twenty. Yeah, tw over twenty songs. Um, we done the Dolly so song book tour last March, and it was just absolutely brilliant. We were up and down the country, and we had the best time ever, oh, didn't we? Brilliant, yeah. And so this time good. round, we are going to make it even bigger even better and of course you're going to have the most iconic Dolly songs but you're going to have some little hidden gems in there as well that people might not necessarily know that Dolly has written these songs because she's so versatile. Of course, that's um, the great part about yeah, it really, yeah. yeah. The amount of people when, that came to the show and actually said, I didn't know Dolly wrote that, that song. That? Yeah. When, when can we see this? So, we're one. coming to Belfast, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the 1st of March, we are going to be at the Belfast Opera House with the Dolly Songbook oh, Show. Fabulous, fabulous. <laughs> well, I mean, you've, you've played all the big gigs here. You've played the SS e Arena, you've played the Waterfront, you've played the Ulster Hall. Yeah. And now it's, it's the Opera House. Yeah, the, the, the Belfast Opera House. I, the last time I was there, I think I was 13 years of age. And I, I remember I got to sing Silent Night on that stage. And it's just, it's going to bring back so many lovely memories it's such a beautiful place and i cannot wait to bring the dolly song back there are you going to dance for us because you got into the final of rte's <laughs> dancing with the stars are you going to dance for us um you know that was a couple of years ago now I jerry know. <laughs> i know you're still a young thing oh, and look you have a new partner oh yeah. don't bring me into this <laughs> <laughs> well look look it's, it's thank you so much for coming along thank you good for luck good us. luck with the the dolly song thank because, you. as you say that's coming to the grand opera house and congratulations on the wedding. Thank, Thank you. So you. Mr. and Mrs. Sheeran. Thank you. Cleo, boo boo, boo boo. <laughs> That's who they are. Well done, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's, uh, unfortunately, that's, that's about it for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, until we see you again, bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. Very much.